when discussing hip hop, there's always talks about what could have been, who should have been a superstar, and stuff like that. Then we also ask questions like, I wonder what would happen if this person didn't pass away so soon. I wonder what would happen if this person would have signed to this label. What could have happened? Or things like that. But I honestly feel like one of the biggest tragedies that have ever taken place in hip hop is when we talk about the legendary MC himself, the DOC. The DOC has been credited as one of the greatest lyricists and songwriters of all time. He's definitely one of those guys that's him when it comes to that pen. But when he showed off his lyrical abilities with his debut album, No One Can Do It Better, which went on to achieve platinum status in 1989, and it also peaked at number one. Now, if you never had the opportunity to listen to this album, then you're definitely missing out. It's definitely a masterpiece. But there would be something that would end up happening that same year that his album dropped that would change his life and change hip-hop forever. The DLC will be born Tracy Curry in West Dallas, Texas. He will fall in love with music at a very young age. It will be his father who will play a lot of the greats, such as, you know, Nat King Cole and things like that, that had him fall in love with music. And he will end up getting his start in singing as a child, but it will be in 1981 where he will fall in love with hip-hop, and it will be the Sugar Hills Gang song they call Apache, coming from their second album, Eighth Wonder, which will have him falling in love with hip hop and he was hooked ever since. He would get his start with the Feel of Fresh crew in 1986. One of the members of the Feel of Fresh crew, Dr. Rock, will end up being associated with Dr. Dre, DJing for the world class wrecking crew. And this would end up helping land the Feel of Fresh crew a spot on the NWA and the Posse compilation in 1987. Now, a year after that, the trio ended up releasing an EP called The Toughest Man Alive, which promoted three of their singles. Now, I guess it, since it didn't have really much of a big buzz, DOC ended up leaving, and he ended up changing his name to the DOC. Now, this is when Dre and Eazy e wanted to basically link with him and bring him out there to California, so therefore, he can work. And that's exactly what DOC did because of the simple fact that since the Feel of Fresh crew didn't work out so well, his mother wanted him to either get a job or go to the army or do something and or go to college. And none of that was in his favor. He was, you know, he wanted to do music. So he just sacked, he sucked it up and went out to California and the rest was history. The DOC would end up writing a lot of songs that contribute to Easy es debut album, Easy Does It. And he also would end up contributing some uh, songwriting credits to NWA's album, Straight Outta Compton. Now, after those albums will go on to be successful, the DOC will lock in with Dr. Dre to go and start working on his debut album, No One Can Do It Better. And the first single that will come from that was be Is It Funky Enough? Which will go on to chart at number one. And then this is when we would get the album, No One Can Do It Better. And that album will end up eventually going gold and then end up reaching platinum status success. But it will be the success for the DLC will end up being short lived because of what will end up taking place. In November 1989, Doc will be driving home from a party very intoxicated. First, he will end up being pulled over by the police for running a red light and swerving a little bit. And they kind of knew he was under the influence, but once they recognized like that he was affiliated with NWA and Ruthless Records, uh, they basically gave him a pass. They took pictures with him as far as holding the gold records he had in his back seat and everything, and they let him go. And it was just crazy, man. And then while continuing to drive home, he would fall asleep at the wheel. His car veered off the freeway and um, hit a wall. And... Doc wasn't wearing a seatbelt, so he would end up being thrown out of the back window and slamming his face into a tree. All of his teeth end up being knocked out. Um, just, it was very, very, very bad. His injuries required 21 hours of plastic surgery, and he was spent more, no more than three weeks in the hospital. He wouldn't be able to speak for a month, but it actually wouldn't be the car accident that would end up changing his voice. They were, they were actually damaged, and this I didn't find out too much later. Yeah. They were actually damaged in the hospital afterwards. Okay. And that damage was multiplied by actions that I took trying to expedite the healing process. So uh, ex explain what happened in the hospital with your voice. 
uh, when you have a, a, an accident as critical as mine was, that I would imagine that the immediate response is let's try to save this person's life. Yeah. We're going to sedate him or her. We're going to trach them and do what we do. Trach is a tube in your throat? Right. Yeah. And so, uh, but I was on Lord knows what, and they didn't want to risk, you know, so when they wanted to trach, I was fighting. That I can actually remember. Um, it was a real struggle. And when they were shoving it down, they just dislodged one of the cords, which which I found out later in life is actually a pretty common thing. You know what I mean? And if I'd have just left it alone, maybe a year or so later, it, it might have come back, you know? But what happened though? Uh, shortly after that, they wanted me to continue to perform the record, right? But I couldn't talk at all, you know? Yeah. So I thought if I got, the doctor said, if you get the scar tissue removed, then it'll help expedite the healing process. Maybe I can get something back faster. I didn't want to go lip sync the records, you know, cause back then in hip hop, um, Realism meant everything, everything, you know, so I couldn't I just didn't have the wherewithal to pull it off mentally uh, So I went and had the operation and I found this out many years later That the doctor that removed that scar tissue removed too much and so it was never even possible for it to to ever heal right. Like it like it once was, you know, that dream was dead after that point and that was because you wanted to hurry up and get back on right. stage. Probably a lot of athletes go through stuff like that, oh, bro. Absolutely. You know. Now, even with him losing his voice, this wouldn't stop Doc from rising to greatness as a songwriter and contributing to some of the greatest hip hop albums ever. After leaving Ruthless Records, he would go on to be one of the co-founders of Death Row, along with Suge Knight, Dr. Dre, and the silent partner by the name of Harry Yo. He would also end up pinning for the classic album The Chronic in late 1992 and we also helped Snoop step his songs writing game up and he will also pin a little bit for Doggy Style as well. Both albums will go on to achieve multi-platinum success. Now even though right after Doc would still drop a couple of future projects but you cannot help but to ask what if he didn't lose his voice on San Fires, the car accident and the surgeries and stuff like that. Me, personally, I feel like we would have been having a whole different conversation when it came to these top five and all that stuff. List. Like, we put, we put Biggie and Pac and Jay-Z and Nas. He definitely would have been in that top, that top five list if that wouldn't have happened. We would have got more great albums from him. He would have been multi-platinum. He would have been one of those guys that had the West Coast on his back, along with Dr. Dre, along with Snoop and others. And I just feel like, you know, he would have just been more dominant far as just a lyrical beast. Because you got to think, he showcased his lyrical skills and just everything that he was about off one album. Just one album that made him such a great MC. And just imagine what we could have gotten far as vocal wise coming from him. You know, and I, you know, it's one of the the, the tragic hip hop hip hop stories. I feel like he's someone who deserves, you know, that credit. You know, a lot of people sleep on him. A lot of people don't even know that you know he's helped uh, pin a lot of your favorite artists' songs and helped them, you know, really rise to prominence when it comes to this rap game. But, you know, that's just how I feel. I feel like we've been having a whole different t uh, conversation when it comes to your favorite your favorite rappers or whatever like that. And honestly, I don't think if he would have been around and still been able to be, you know, recording like he usually does, like far as his regular voice, some 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 of your favorite MCs would not have been on the list because they wouldn't fucking with Doc, in my opinion. That's just me, man. But y'all let me know in the comments, man, what y'all think. If the DOC didn't lose his voice... Like, how you think things would have turned out for him, man? Y'all let me know in the comments, man. But don't forget to hit that like button. And also make sure you subscribe to the MN channel, man. So, therefore, you can get notifications for more content. 
Also, make sure you go check out the DOC's documentary. Man, it's very, very great, man. It's a very great piece of work and just shows you his history, uh, how he came up in Dallas, and just the whole history of his life, man. Go check it out, man. Go support the brother. He definitely deserves it, man.